Now, I know you can't tell the size of these crops, but, you know, these are all three and four pounders. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, they're all uh, kind of in the 10 to a 12 inch size, most of them. So what I'm going to talk about here is how I'm cleaning fish at the kitchen sink, and I'm trying to minimize the smell and the cleanup. One little scale. I'll pick that up. These fish went on ice quickly, and I like to keep them on ice before I clean them. It does really congeal the blood, which also minimizes your cleanup from that as well. So two different sizes of Ziploc bags. I've got a one gallon and a quart size, and I use the ones which, you know, are most appropriate for the number of fish that I have and my intended purposes for these. So I'm working on a fish fry right now. So I'm gonna use the bigger gallon bags to store my fish in. I have vinegar and I have baking soda. Now both of these are going to play an important role of minimizing the smell at the kitchen sink both during and after the process. I'm going to use electric knives for this. I always have these two in my kit. You know, I grew up using the Mr. Twister electric knife. It uh, does the job well. I also have one of the American Angler Titaniums, which is, you know, nice quality knife. So both of these are part of my, my cleaning. I do put the fillets in a bowl of ice water to take care of that. And then I've got my three layers of bags, of which the outer one is a heavy-duty construction trash bag. Now when I get through with this, I'm not going to put it in the trash. I'm going to save this, put it in the freezer, freeze the remains. And then in Oklahoma, we are allowed to dispose of fish cleaning remains in the lake. Next trip to the lake, I'll take them back. I'll dump them out wipe my plastic bags up and then throw those away. One side of the sink, I've got the, uh, the strainer so I don't have anything going down that side that I don't want to go down on. On the other side, the garbage disposal side, you know, I'm not quite as concerned about that, but on both sides, I'm gonna start out with pour baking soda down around the sink itself and pour a little vinegar in there. And like I said, that kind of starts the, uh, the process of helping minimize odor at the sink. You've got fish in the house. It is going to smell like fish. There's no getting away from that. But uh, this is definitely going to minimize all of that. And then, you know, you're going to have a uh, happy housemate when you get through. And especially when you start feeding them some of these fish. You do have a throw rug or something like that in front of your sink. You know, you're going to want to move that beforehand because bare floor is best. It makes for easy cleanup. If you do have some dried scales afterwards, that's easy to vacuum up. For me, my preference is always to start with the fish's back toward me. So the side fin coming right behind it. And I'm going right down to the belly and I'm feeling for that backbone right here. I'm coming down until I feel that backbone with the knife. I'm just kind of going back and forth as I feel that backbone going down the fish. On the belly side, I'm staying right above the fin on the belly. So as I do that, I'm feeling my way all the way through. I'm going right down to almost the tip of the tail. I really have gotten through all the skin, but I have not cut through it. So at this point, I want to get faster at it. What you can do is pull your knife back up forward and just flip that thing over like that. So now I've got this fillet here. It's still attached to the skin. I'll use my fingertips to hold that there. I'm going to go right down against that with my blade and cut that off. So there's my very first fillet. A few little eggs starting in there already. But see, you've got a really nice size fillet off of that. You have the rib cage on there, no other bones, no other scales on that at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this fish over toward me. I'm going to repeat that process, holding that fin up out of the way. I'm coming at an angle where I'm getting back up behind, right behind the head, catching as much as I can, staying down through here. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going down, feeling the back more and I stop. Come down here to the tail or to the belly and I stop. Now I go back up, I find that backbone. And I start going down that, just feeling my way through as I go. See, I'm kind of rotating this blade back and forth, feeling my way on it. Get down here, same thing, flip it over, got it down, that knife blade down, right up against it, pull it off. So the closer you can get your waste basket to this process, the less cleanup you're going to also have. The carcass is going right into it, and again, I'm trying to keep... All of that over the sink, right over to the trash the whole time to minimize, uh, you know, clean up afterwards. So now I have my two fillets on here. I'm going to go back and clean off the rib cages. What you're going to do is take your electric knife 
get that fillet in position and just kind of feel your way through that. Just going right up against, you've got your, your knife working up this time instead of down. So right across there, you've got it. A little bit of skin I'm going to knock off right there. Got that one. This one I'm going to put immediately on ice. The fillet, bring it over here. My rib cage is right there. My knife blade is just directly in it. And I'm pushing up toward that rib cage as I go. Bone free, I want it clean. I'm really particular about that. So I've got a really nice fillet right here. That's going on my ice. I'll go back later and wash those up before I freeze them. Okay, it's going to happen. So when you do cut through the hill part of it, I'm going to show you what you can do to fix that. Coming behind it, coming down, find the backbone. I'm watching the tip of my blade go right above the belly fin. I'm standing right against the back fin, the dorsal fin. Come right to it. Oh, oh man, I cut through there. So what do I do now? Now I've got it unattached, which has been a big part of helping me hold that before. It's really easy. Just get that fillet situated. Kind of use your fingertips of your forefinger, next finger. That becomes your anchor. You're holding that fillet in place. Slide that blade right down through there. That just as clean as can be. Okay, so that happened there. Now this time, what happens if I cut through the backbone on it? So, oh man, I cut the whole head off. So now what do I do? Well, it's kind of the same thing there. Use, use your fingers to position yourself to hold that thing so that you're coming right back up and you're, you're just getting that same blade started again as you normally would. So I'm just holding the, the front of that fish with my fingers. I'm getting my blade positioned back to the backbone, back above the belly fin, feeling my way down through there. And I flip it right back over and there we are again. So even when you do make a mistake, don't feel like that you have wasted that whole fish. You don't. You can fix that. So just take that. Do as I showed you. Hold the parts of it. Come back in now. Clean your ribcage off. Keep that blade really high on there. So you're just under the ribs. Pieces are rib free. Going into my bowl of ice water. The bigger stuff I'll pick up and throw in there in the trash. Any of the other stuff, I'm going to push off on the garbage disposal side of my sink itself because I'm going to wash that, grind it right down the garbage disposal, and it'll go. So you know it's a lot easier to write on a dry, flat bag than one that you've already put fish in that's wet. So go ahead and do that before you put your fish in there. Put what the fish is and put the date. And when I am freezing fish, I do put water in the bag with my fillets. Buck that air and water out. Get all the fillets covered with water. All the air out nice and flat. And there we go with two bags of fillets ready for the freezer. A little baking soda around the sink, down the drain. Now I'm going to follow that with a dose of vinegar in both of these sinks. Oh, uh, listen, that fizz, fizz. So I have all of my fish remains right here in the bottom of the first bag. I don't want it super tight because I do want air coming out of it. So even if I have to punch an air hole in it to compress it, I'm not opposed to doing that too. Take that back out. Put that bag in the freezer. You're going to want to vacuum the scales up on the floor. If you use a cloth type towel like I did, you're obviously going to want to wash that. Let it dry overnight, go outside, shake it off, get the scales off that. Then you want to put it through the washing machine. And then if you use paper towels at all, which I use some of those, I just dropped into our regular kitchen waste basket. You want to take that out tonight. And one more time, pour some vinegar down. Just kind of down around the basin itself. I'm going to dust the whole thing again with my baking soda and I'm just going to leave that in there all night long. That I would recommend is a final inspection, so let's do that. Hey Donna, how about coming and taking a look? I'll pick that up. One little scale. What do you think? Thumbs up, alright. Good job. Thank you. So maybe I'll get to clean them in the kitchen again. <laughs>